welcome back to my channel today we are going to learn how to make this flower top it's very easy very easy approach i'll walk you through the steps uh, for this project i used a uh, fingering weight yarn so you'll be seeing me doubling my strand but if you have a dk weight yarn or a medium weight yarn or a thicker yarn that at least recommends a 3.5 to a 4 millimeter crochet hook please don't double your strand i'm only doubling it because i'm using a thin fingering weight yarn for this project you'll need three colors of your choice any three colors and this is a project that is very good for scrap yarn and uh, the colors that i'll use are green blue and pink and then you'll also need a hook for the hook i'm using a four millimeter crochet hook you can go down a size like a 3.75 or a 3.5 for the smaller sizes i'll be demonstrating for a size medium so if you're a size small consider going down a bit like uh, to a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook so that you achieve tighter tension and uh, closer stitches so that your work can be a little bit more compact and then you also need a pair of scissors and a dunning needle to weave in your ends so let's get started um, i'll also need a measuring tip i'll be using this to measure the boxes for you and uh, so that you can follow along easily so grab your very first color and you're going to start off with a magic ring like this just cross over your work like this and grab the working yarn and hold now you're going to chain one and make sure that that chain is really tight so that this closes off the magic ring we don't count it as a chain or as as a stitch so you're going to make a chain of four one two three and four and uh, this counts as a double crochet chain one and the terms that we are using for this tutorial are us terms so a chain four counts as a double crochet chain one then you're going to prepare for a double crochet and insert your hook into the magic ring up a loop you'll have three loops on your hook yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two that's another double crochet so so far we have two double crochets separated by a chain one space and we want a total of eight double crochets separated by chain one spaces so so far we have two so you're going to chain one and then one double crochet into the same magic ring chain one one double crochet so those are four double crochets as you can see here chain one five chain one six chain one seven chain one and eight so we have our eight double crochets just to cross check we have one two three four five six seven eight after this you're going to chain one and at this point we are going to close off our magic ring just get the tail of the magic ring and pull it so that it closes up completely just make sure it's tight enough and after you chain one here the chain that we made you're going to go into the third chain of the beginning chain four so you're going to count from the base one two three and into that third chain you're going to insert your hook pull through all and that is a slip stitch after this you're going to chain one and cut your yarn so that marks the end of round one we have a total of eight double crochets separated by chain one spaces so let's go on to our second color and my second color will be green you're going to make a slip knot 
and attach your yarn in any chain one space of the first round any chain one space i prefer to go right next to a chain one space that's close to this tail that we left behind after round one that way i can weave in my ends comfortably well and easily so i'm going to go into the chain one space right after this tail that i left behind insert your hoop and attach your second color and this doesn't count as a chain this is just to attach the next color then you're going to make a chain of three which counts as a double crochet go into the same space with two more double crochets so we have a total of three double crochets into the very first chain one space of round one and then you're going to make a chain of two go into the next chain one space with a total of three double crochets one two three chain two three double crochets into the next chain one space so that's the repeat for this round go all the way around placing three double crochets into each chain one space and separate each group of three double crochets with two chains in between so chain two three double crochets into the next chain two So I'm coming to the very last chain one space, which is this one. You're going to go in there with a total of three double crochets, just like we've been doing before. And then you're going to chain two and slip stitch on top of the very first chain three of the round. So insert your hook into the top of the chain three and pull through all. That is a slip stitch. Like that and then you're going to chain one and cut your yarn that marks the end of round two so guys i had to interchange the colors because my very first plan was to start with green and i forgot all about that and i started with blue for my very first sample so i've just repeated the same exact process starting with green and then blue and then pink just like we have for this very first breakup so that was my error so um after this you're going to go on to your third color and for me that is going to be hot pink so you're going to grab your color your third color and this is going to be the edging color so whatever you choose to use for your third color that will be your edging color or your main color the second color creates the petals those very visible petals and the very first color uh, creates the middle part of the petals that middle part so you're going to grab your third color and attach that color into any chain to space but i prefer to attach it here next to the tail that we left behind for our second color so we're going to attach here with a slip stitch like that and then you're going to make a chain of three which counts as a double crochet so you're going to go into the same space with two more double crochets then you're going to chain two you're going to go into the next chain two space with a total of three double crochets
chain two and three more double crochets into the same space. And this will create our very first corner, as you can see here. Then from here, you're going to chain two, three double crochets into the next chain two space. Chain two and into the next space we are going to create our next corner so three double crochets chain two and three more double crochets that has created our second corner so we have the side here and then the corners here then you're going to make a chain of two three double crochets into the next chain two space chain two create your next corner here into the next chain two space so three double crochets chain two and three more double crochets like that and then you're going to make a chain of two three double crochets into the next chain two space chain two and we are creating our very last corner so so far we have one two and three corners so we are creating our very last one here so three double crochets chain two and three more double crochets into the same exact space After this, you're going to make a chain of two and slip stitch on top of the very first chain three of the round. So go into the top chain of the chain three and pull through all. That's a slip stitch. Remember, after chaining two, that's when you place the slip stitch into the very first stitch of the round. After this, you're going to chain one. Grab your pair of scissors and cut your yarn through and fasten off so this is what we have right now so we're going to turn our work onto the wrong side the first thing that i'm going to do is to tie the two strands that are close to each other so we have blue and green you're going to just make a double knot there you can uh, use your darning needle within your ends if you wish you just tie the the tails that you left behind together and then cut the pink is next to the blue as you can see you just make a double knot at the back you can tie it three times if you wish just to be more secure but a double knot on acrylic yarn is relatively good after that you're going to get this tail and weave it in as well. So I prefer to pass one strand around the post of one of the double crochets and then make a knot. If you're using one strand of yarn, then you're going to have to use a darning needle for this one to secure it, the very first one and the very last one as well, because you will have only one strand here. So. You will use a darning needle to weave in but since i have two strands i can just tie them together to form a knot and it secures my stitches very well so this is how our square looks like without the tails this is how the back side looks like and this is how the front side looks like so you're going to go ahead and make two more pieces up to this level just repeat the same exact process that we did for this uh, square from round one to round two. So as you can see here, we have round one and two and round one and two, two more pieces like this. And then uh, we shall see what to do next. All right, guys, so after creating your two pieces, you're going to get one of them and we're going to be working our very last color on it while joining it onto this one 
So you can decide to make the squares first and then you use uh, the denning needle to join the edges together. That's also fine. But I'm going to show you the technique where you work your final round of your second square while joining it onto the first square. So we're going to attach our final color in the space right next to the tail that we left behind for round two, just like we did for our very first square. So you're going to attach your yarn here. You're going to chain three. Two more double crochets into that same space. And then you're going to make a chain of two. Go into the next chain two space. <clears throat> with a total of three double crochets. And remember this is supposed to be the corner of the square. The very first corner of the square. But before you complete the corner, you're going to make a chain of one. Remove your hook grab this square where you're supposed to attach get any of the corners into the chain to space of any of the corners insert your hook pull through this loop and then chain one that way we've created a chain of two just like we had two and at this point we've attached our very first square to the second one then you're going to prepare for a double crochet and go back into the same space with a total of three double crochets. Remember this space had to get three double crochets, chain two and three double crochets. And we've managed to achieve that, but while joining onto this square as well. So after this, you're going to chain one, remove your hook. Remember it has to be a chain of two. So chain one, remove your hook, go into the next space here pull through the loop and chain your second chain make your second chain and then go into the next chain to space on the second square and place your three double crochets so you can see we are attaching the two squares together as we go so after this you're going to chain one remove your hook go into this finished square pull through the loop chain one more and go into this second motif and place a total of three double crochets this is supposed to be a corner so three double crochets chain one remove your hook go into the corner of the first motif insert your hook into the corner pull through and then chain one more so that way we've created our next corner so after this you're going to go into the same exact chain to space with a total of three double crochets one two and three so we've completed our corner while joining onto the very first motif so this is what we have now from here we're going to complete our round as usual without joining anywhere chain one sorry chain two and then into the next chain to space you're going to place three double crochets chain two this is supposed to be the next corner so you're going to place three double crochets chain two and three more double crochets That. and then chain two three double crochets into the next chain two space sorry chain two we have one more space left and that space is going to get the very last corner so so far we have one two and three corners so we are placing our very last corner here to make a complete square so three double crochets, chain two, and three more double crochets into the same space. One, two, and three. So after this, you're going to make a chain of two, 
and you're going to slip stitch on top of the very first chain three of the round go through all you're going to chain one and cut your yarn so this is what we have we've joined our second motif onto the first motif try to stretch out your work so that you can get uh, perfect squares so this is what we have so far so you're going to get your second motif uh, your third motif sorry this is supposed to be the third motif and we're going to place it here but what we are going to do is we are going to join two sides of this motif onto these two sides in order to create a triangular shape that we need for our backup. So let me show you how to do that. You're going to make a slip knot and then attach your yarn right next to the tail of the second round like that and then you're going to make a chain of three which counts as a double crochet three more double crochets into sorry two more double crochets into the same space to make a total of three double crochets since the chain three counts as a stitch so after this you're going to make a chain of two and then you're going to go into the next chain to space with a total of three double crochets but this is supposed to be a corner so that means it has to get three double crochets chain to three double crochets but we are going to work that while joining onto what we already have so you're going to chain one remove your hook go into this we're going to join this part, this whole part, onto this motif. So I'm going to start with this corner here while I join all the way across. So make sure this motif is facing the right side as well as the motif that you're working on. So attach, then chain one more and place three more double crochets into the same space. That way we've created our very first corner while attaching onto the motifs that we already have. Then you're going to chain one, remove your hook, go into the next space on this motif, chain one more, and go into the next chain two space on the third motif, and place a total of three double crochets. Like that. Chain one, remove your hook, insert your hook into the next chain two space pull through chain one more and this is supposed to be a corner so you're placing three double crochets it's supposed to be three double crochets chain two three double crochets but we are going to attach onto the motif down here so three double crochets chain one remove your hook and here we are going to insert our hook in the space between the two motifs so here in that space or you can find the very middle section of this of the two motifs so i have this space here where the two motifs met i'm going to insert my hook in there it may be a struggle but try to put it through and then pull this loop through I thought the stitch was very tight okay so the moment you pull that loop through it has been a struggle as you can see you're going to chain one more and place three double crochets into the same space to create a full corner So this is what we have so far. So we've created a joining on one side of this motif, but this motif has to join onto the downer motifs um, two times. 
So that means we are also going to join this part as well. So after this, you're going to chain one, remove your hook, go into the next chain to space on this motif, pull through, chain one, and go into the next chain to space with a total of three double crochets. Chain one, remove your hook, insert your hook into the next chain to space, pull through, chain one more, and then you're going to go into the next chain to space with a total of three double crochets. And this is supposed to be a corner. So three double crochets, chain one, remove your hook, go into the next corner here, which is the very last corner on that edge pull through, chain one more, and then go into the same exact space because this is supposed to be a corner. So you're placing three more double crochets into the same exact chain to space. Like that, to create our third corner. So we have one corner, two, three. So we are left with only one to make a full square. So chain two, and place three double crochets into the next chain to space. Like that. And then chain two and place a corner into the very last chain to space. So we are placing three double crochets. Chain two and three more double crochets into the same exact space. After this, you're going to chain two and slip stitch on top of the very first chain three of the round. Go through all, chain one, and cut your yarn. So I'm going to show you what that has created. We have created our bra cup, as you can see. So this is what we have now. We're going to go onto the wrong side of our work and we're going to get rid of all these strands just like i showed you before so try to use maybe a darning needle or make knots do whatever it takes to get rid of all these loose strands so that we can have a neat bra cup All right, so after getting rid of all your loose strands, you're going to have something that looks like this. It's a perfect triangle. What's here is exactly what's here and exactly what's here. So you're going to choose your upper side of the bra cup because the next step, we are not going to be working the base of the bra cup. We are only going to be working the sides of the bra cup. Just like we usually work for our normal bra cups. So we're going to create an edging for our bra cup just to make it neat and presentable. So we're going to attach our yarn in one of the corners here and make a chain of three like that. And then you're going to make one double crochet in each of the double crochet stitches below. And then into the chain two spaces, you only place one double crochet like that. And then go into the next. Make sure you place a double crochet into the top of the chain three. This may be a little bit hard because the stitch is really tight. So make sure you go into it and continue to double crochet into each double crochet. So I placed my double crochet just right next to the chain three because the chain three is really tight. I can't get in there with this hook. So into the chain two space, you only place one double crochet and continue all the way up until you get to the corner of the bra cup. So here, once you get to this point, you're going to place only one double crochet into this space. 
and then you also place one double crochet onto the opposite side this is where the two uh, motifs meet you place one on this side and one on this side and then continue to double crochet into each double crochet and then one double crochet into the chain two space So we've reached the top of the bra cup, which is the chain to space here. So what you're going to do is place two double crochets, chain two, and two more double crochets into the same exact space. Those who are familiar with the normal crochet, this is exactly what we usually do for our bra cups. So after this you're going to go down to this side imitating the same exact process as we've done this side so one double crochet into each double crochet and one double crochet into each chain to space so go all the way down So we're almost coming to the next corner and I'm going to place only one double crochet into the chain two space of the corner. And remember I told you we're only going to work two sides of the bra cup. So we've gone all the way up and all the way down and we're not going to place anything at the base of the bra cup. So the next thing that we are going to do is to create these scallops sort of like spikes i don't know what to call them but that edging that looks a little bit more detailed so uh for the bigger sizes now this is a medium for size large you can do two more rows of this just chain three turn your work and um double crochet in each double crochet all the way up when you get here you're going to place two double crochets chain two two double crochets and then continue all the way down with one double crochet into each double crochet and then back that's for size large you can do uh, two more rows of the double crochet rows and then for size xl you can do four more rows of the size of the double crochet rows but this is for a size medium for a size small remember i told you to use a smaller hook so that you can achieve tight attention because this will end up being quite big for you so size small extra small i hope you went down a hook size so that you can get tight attention you're going to just follow this same exact process so for you your bra cups are going to be less stretchy and smaller and more compact than what we have for a large because what we have here is the bra cup really stretches to get a bigger cup so after this you're going to make a chain of one turn your work single crochet into the very first stitch and then you're going to make a chain of four slip stitch at the base of the single crochet into those two loops make a slip stitch and then single crochet once in each of the next three stitches then do it again chain four slip stitch at the base of the single crochet into the two loops facing you then single crochet once in each of the next three stitches and we're going to repeat that all the way up until we get to the corner of the bra cup or the top of the bra cup so i'm almost getting to that point where we are close to the top of the bra cup. I have two stitches left, so I'm going to just place one single crochet into each and then single crochet into the chain two space, chain two, 
and one more single crochet into the same space. So let's see what we have. This is the right side of your work. So after this, you're going to go, you're just going to mirror exactly what's on this side. So we had two stitches, one, two, and then create a spike. And then one single crochet in each of the next three stitches. So continue that all the way down to the end of your row. So we're coming to the end of our row and I'm placing my very last spike into the second last stitch and I'll place one single crochet into the very last chain three, which is the very last double crochet. And this is what we have and from here you're going to make a chain of 15 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 and then you're going to chain one one more and cut your yarn So this is what we have for our very first workup. You're going to repeat the same exact process for your second workup. So let me reintroduce my second one and you see what exactly is going on. This is really beautiful. So before you cut your yarn on your second workup, we are going to attach onto our first workup. So this is the first one where we chained 15. And cut our yarn then the second one after your very last single crochet you're going to attach it onto the very first single crochet on this side make sure you go into the very first single crochet and make a slip stitch and then chain one and cut your yarn and go through make sure you leave this strand behind because we are going to uh, we are going to join uh, part of the middle section of these two breakups part of it and uh, we create more closure for our top so after cutting your yarn you're going to leave this at that and then we are going to reattach our yarn on this edge outside edge of the top so attach your yarn into the very first single crochet on this side like that and you're going to make a chain of 18 one two three four five six seven eight after your chain of 18 you're going to go into the fourth chain from the hook so one two three and into the fourth, you're going to place a double crochet. One. And then continue to double crochet once in each and every chain. Until you get to the body of the top. All right, so we've reached the body of the top. And we're going to place one double crochet into the single crochet row. This one that had the scallops. Then you're going to place two double crochets into the double crochet row. The row of edging that we had, the one for double crochets. And then you're going to go into the corner here and place a double crochet there and then double crochet once in each and every double crochet on the bra cup just like we did for the sides and then one double crochet into the chain to space then one double crochet in each of the double crochets 
and one double crochet into the chain two space and we are going to go all the way across remember when you get to this point where the two motifs meet you place one double crochet on this side and then one double crochet on the opposite side So we are trying to spread out the double crochet stitches evenly at the base of the bra cups. So two double crochets into the double crochet space. One double crochet into the single crochet row. And then cross over to the opposite side. One double crochet into the single crochet row, two double crochets into the double crochet row, and then into the corner, one double crochet, and then continue, just like we did for the first half of the top. Okay. This is what we have. You can see the base is now looking cleaner than what we have on this side so go all the way across and i'll meet you back at the end of this go all the way across the top and then place one double crochet into each of these chains and i'll meet you back at the end of this row okay so after making it all the way across your top you're going to chain one cut your yarn this is the best. This is more like a bikini top or a crop top, something very simple. So you're going to get your darning needle. Turn your work to the wrong side. And then you're going to thread the middle strand that we left behind. You're going to thread it into the darning needle and we're going to close up a few stitches here. So that we don't get this really wide opening of the top if you want it leave it if you don't want it then you're going to go on to the wrong side and we start attaching our pieces together so what you do is make sure that the spikes are always on the right side of the work as you join the middle part as you can see, I've pushed the spike onto the other side, which is the right side of the work. And even when I get here, I'll join this part like this and make sure I push the spikes onto the other side and join the, the next stitches together. So what we have here, we don't have the spikes because we don't need them on the wrong side. That design has to come onto the right side of our work. So look what we have at the moment they create some sort of like button sort of feel so you're going to join until you have enough coverage i think i'm going to close up until i cover up a total of three spikes for my top in order to create a decent coverage for my bikini top so as you can see this is what we've created. Now you're going to weave in this tail. Just go in and out of a few stitches in order to weave in all the tails here. And after that, you're going to cut your yarn. So this is what we have. Then you're going to go ahead and weave in all these tails before you work on your straps. You can do that as a final step, but I prefer to work as I weave in the tails because when they become so many, I'm always frustrated at the end of my projects. So do whatever it takes. If you need a darning needle to weave in your ends, please use it.
All right, now we are going to start working on the straps of our top. You can do just plain chains, those normal chains, or you can use my approach of thicker straps. So for this tutorial, I'm going to do the normal chains, but if you want to learn how to make thicker straps for your crochet projects, I already have a tutorial that teaches you how to do this, and you can check it out in the link on the screen. You can go ahead and learn how to do that. So for this one, I'm going to just use normal chains. Just attach your yarn, single crochet into the chain two space because we have a chain two at the top of our top here. So you're going to make a simple chain of around 80. One, two, three, four, five. So after your 80 chains, you're going to cut your yarn and pull through. And you're going to do the same thing on this side for your second strap. Okay, so this is what we have. After this, you're going to make sure you get rid of these loose ends. And then turn your work to the wrong side and weave in your tails. So now imagine that I hadn't been weaving in my tails all this time. Imagine the mess that we would be having at the end of the project. We would have all these lying around, all these, the ones that we attached. So I prefer to weave in while going. So these are the straps that are going to tie behind your neck like this. And now we are going to create the straps that are going to tie at the back of our under bust. So you're going to grab your yarn and make a slip knot and make a chain of a hundred.
so I have my 100 chains you're going to cut your yarn and pull through now I prefer my back straps to be a little bit more sturdy and stronger so you're going to fold that into half and you're going to put it through two chains away from the edge so fold through the chain that loop after folding the chain into half and then pull through this like that so it will create a hole here but that hole is just to secure the chain so after this you are going to cut your extra strands and do the same on this side so let me just go ahead and do that all right guys so we are done with both the straps and uh, i'm going to cut this so i'm going to turn my work onto the wrong side and these chains that we've just created at the base of the bra cup will tie at the back of the rib cage at our under bust level like that and then we shall have something like this and at this point you can choose to line your work because we have so many holes going on but uh, you can also choose to pad your work I have a full detailed video of how to put a padding in your bra cup and I'll be leaving it on the screen for you guys to try out if that's something that interests you. So that marks the end of this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed making this with me. Make sure you give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and if you have any complaints please leave them in the in the comment section so that I'm able to improve on the tutorials that I bring for you guys and i hope to see your recreations of this piece make sure you tag me in your finished projects and i'll see you in my next video don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more amazing videos like this and thanks for watching bye